Hi, ladies and gents. In this section, I want to spend a few minutes just talking about the life and times of Sir Isaac Newton. Um, Sir Isaac Newton is considered one of the greatest, greatest physicists of all times. If you ask anyone out there to name a famous physicist, uh, most people are going to be able to, to name Einstein, Newton, and perhaps Galileo. And if you take a physics class and we don't spend a little bit of time talking about these gentlemen, I'm going to feel like I haven't done my job. Um, Sir Isaac Bo Bo Newton was born in England in 1642. Historically, just kind of an interesting fact. He was born the same year that Galileo died. He, this is a photo of his ancestral home. And Sir Isaac Newton was born to probably today we'd call him upper middle class. Um, his family were farmers, although Isaac was very, very bookish and uh, was not terribly good or useful out on the farm. When he was a young man, probably about 11 or so, he was sent to boarding school. And I think it's so nice that people have actually seen the Harry Potter movies, because in the same way that Harry Potter was sent off to Hogwarts, um, Isaac Newton was sent off to Cambridge University. So he got his degree and eventually got graduated from high school and eventually got a degree in mathematics. As he was a young person growing up, nobody looked at him and said, aha, this is going to be the guy who's going to change the world with his, with his brilliance. Um, he was very, very quiet. He never married. He had a handful of very close friends, but he was just kind of a quiet little nerd, I guess we would call him today. When he was in his early te late teens, early 20s, um, he was sent home from Cambridge University because of the fact that there was a plague. And in those days, plague, you were much more likely to get it if you lived in town. So they shut down the entire university for a year, sent Sir Isaac Newton home where his family was running the farm and he was kind of like, mm, didn't know what to do with himself. So he had an entire year to think and to ponder. He wrote in little notebooks. He was a broke college student, kind of like you're a broke college student. And these notebooks still exist in museums today. And in these notebooks, he wrote the, the seeds of some of his most important ideas. So we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the big, big accomplishments of Sir Isaac Newton. He came up with three laws of motion, which we're going to cover in great detail in this course. The law of inertia, the law of unbalanced forces, and the third law, the law of equal and opposite forces. Newton, in his lifetime, designed something which was referred to as a reflecting telescope. This is a telescope that has a big mirror in the end, um, the old-fashioned ones, and some of the ones you can still buy today, the eyepiece is in the side, and light from a distant star, etc., is going to come in, focus off the mirror, come back to a mirror, and... Uh, curve mirror, come back to a plane mirror, and go into your eye. The Hubble telescope is actually loosely and tremendously based on the old-fashioned Newtonian telescope that was invented in the 1600s, which is pretty cool design. Sir Isaac Newton is the person, first person who figured out that white light is made of all the colors of the rainbow. And he did it by taking a prism and passing white light through the prism, and he got out the rainbow of colors you and I are familiar with today. Prior to Newton's work on light and optics, people thought that color was sort of an impurity, sort of like if you make Kool-Aid in a pitcher, the color comes from the Kool-Aid powder. powder. Um, and they thought that color was an impurity of light. Well, Newton said, no, that's not it. Light itself is made up of all these different colors, and when you combine them, that's when you get white light. Very different idea. Sir Isaac Newton invented calculus, and he did it so that he could explain mathematically gravity. Now, I know this is what you do on a hot Saturday night, is uh, you sit around and invent a new kind of mathematics. But Newton was a fabulous and bona fide genius. Um, if you ever take a calculus class, there are two kinds of 
notation that are used, one by a gentleman named Leibniz, and Leibniz um, had one set of notation, Newton had the other, um, and they both invented calculus independent of each other. And of course there's the universal law of gravity. This was a big monster idea in science because it was the very first time that one rule or one law governed both the heavens and the earth. Now, Newton himself told the story of being in the apple orchard, sitting under a tree, and he was contemplating the moon when an apple fell. And he had this eureka moment when he went, aha, it is the same force of gravity that makes the apple fall that makes the moon stay in orbit around the earth. Now, if you come to think about it, this is an incredibly boring story. Guy sitting in an orchard and fruit starts falling. Not a terribly interesting story, but why in the world has this come down through history? Because it was the very first time anybody mathematically showed that the rules in the heavens and the rules on earth were exactly the same. This is referred to as the first grand unification of physics. Heaven and earth were unified as in they both follow the same rules. This is also Newton was the first person to mathematically describe a force acting at a distance. Remember we talked about contact forces and forces at a distance? So something was acting from the earth to the moon and they're not touching each other, but yet a force was transmitted. All right, those are the basic big ideas about the life of Sir Isaac Newton and some of his major accomplishments. Next time we're going to come back and we'll start studying some of those things. Bye-bye.